God, I praise you for what you're going to do. Lord, I give you the praise and glory for it all. And I ask all these things in Jesus. All right. Uh, do you got the verses, Miss Leslie? I know Mr. Will ain't here. Still got a little ring, it, Tony. There we go. All right, kids, y'all ready? Here we go. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Go to the next one. You got to help us. <laughs> I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. Amen. At this time, all the kids can head on to Children's Church. Adults, if you'll turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter number 20. Exodus chapter number 20. We're going to be looking at verse 24 and 25. This morning, I want to talk about an altar. The altar, you know, the Bible teaches us about things God has given us. And we'll talk about some of that right here in just a moment. But things where we can come to God, where we can uh, get the power of God and, and enjoy the power of God in our lives. Because listen, there are times in life where we need more than just a little bit of prayer. Can I get an Amen. We need God to interact, to show up, and to show out in our lives. And God has shown us ways to get there, to do that. And I'm going to tell you, as you're turning there, before we read, um, this spot all across right here, we call an altar. And I'll, make, uh, I'll talk about that more here in just a moment. But let me tell you, in my life, and I've been on this earth 40 years, been in church my entire life, at the altar in a church, in an old-fashioned church, I have seen lives changed. I have seen people walk in those doors, and not just this church, but the church I grew up in and other churches. I have seen people walk in doors, and then by the end of that service, come down to what we call an old-fashioned altar, and God changes that person's life. They have a meeting and a time with God that completely changes their life. And I feel like right now, and I've told some people this recently, you just don't see altars full like we used to. You don't see people down at the altars on Sunday mornings like we used to. And let me tell you something, you're cheating you when you're not there. God has given us this wonderful thing. And I, I want to show you right here first what an altar is and what the purpose of the altar was. Now, this right here in Exodus is where God has given Moses the law. He has given him the law. He's given him things to do. And here you find the Ten Commandments. You will find many other laws of the Bible. You will find the, um, the uh, blueprints for the tabernacle. And right here, though, God gives us rules for building an altar. And look what he says. Verse 24, he says, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Everybody say, bless thee with you. Bless thee. And look what he says in verse 25. He says, And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. So here's what he's saying right here. He said, I want you to build an altar, and I want you to do sacrifices upon this altar, and bring your sacrifices upon this altar, and in doing so, when you do it with the right heart and the right intentions, I will bless it. But let me tell you something else about this altar that cannot be. You cannot take it and make it this beautiful thing. You know why? People would start worshiping it. And not the power that God has showed up on it. You see, here's, here's the thing. This is a stage. 
There is nothing special. There's nothing wonderful. There's nothing neat about it. It is a stage. But when you place this on this stage, it becomes an altar. This is a pulpit. Uh, somebody told me one day, they said, man, we need to get rid of that and get you like one of them little metal platforms. I said, uh-uh, you ain't touching this. I like it. I can hit it. I can grab on it. And I can hang on. Amen. I mean, I like it. But here's the thing. At a pulpit on a stage, it becomes an altar. You see, a stage man mans. An altar, God mans. On a stage, we use it for entertainment purposes. At an altar, we, meet, we use it to meet with God and talk with God. For manifestation, interacting with God one-on-one. On a stage, natural beings use it. At an altar, the super, supernatural Shows up. Uh, on a stage, it's man by flesh. On an altar, it's man by the Spirit. Uh, on a stage, you have people just showing up. And man is sitting here just praising and just putting on a show. On an altar right here, God mans it. And God shows up and shows out in our lives. You see, this is a new Altar. We ain't building altars outside no more like they did right here. We've got the promise of Jesus. We don't have these altars built and these things built outside and outdoor like they were doing back then. We have what we call the church. And at the base and at the foot of the stage is a pulpit. And an altar where God shows up and shows out every Sunday for us and in other times in our lives. I have seriously, literally seen, like I was telling you earlier, I have seen people that were just eat up with addiction, eat up with anger, eat up with marital problems, and just come into these doors and surrender at an old-fashioned altar. And God totally changed their lives. But, but here's the thing. Is God not the same yesterday, today, and forever? Are we living in a perfect world in 2022? Come on now. Are we living in a perfect world in 2022? How y'all like them gas prices? How y'all like that, ga- uh, that price of a gallon of milk right now? How, how y'all like the, the, uh, the crime rate right now? How y'all like the politicians right now? I, y'all finna go crazy. I'm finna, <laughs> finna start a riot in church. But why at the end of services aren't we down here at the altar? Why aren't we down here giving it to the one who can change it? Why aren't we giving our lives and surrendering our lives to God? Well, here's some things about the altar. I'm going to give you a few things this morning. Number one, there has to be acceptance at the altar. You say, Jonathan, what do you mean acceptance? Number one, you've got to accept who you are. Do you understand who you are? Have you ever thought about your life and who you are? You know what the problem with acceptance a lot of time is? You know who you are and you have a lot of trouble accepting it. You have a lot of trouble coming to grasp with maybe who you are or what you have become or what you have done. And it eats at you and it kills you. You know, a lot of us do things in life to get people to accept us. As a matter of fact, how many, I told him in Sunday school a minute ago, you can tell when a little boy first gets interested in a girl. You know why? They start taking a bath. <laughs> and they will brush their teeth. And they will comb your hair, their hair. And you ain't said a word to them. It is like pulling teeth trying to get Ian to make sure he takes a bath every week. Every day of the week. Ian, did you take a bath? Uh, I think so. A couple days ago. Like, in, a, in about another year or so, six months, year, it's getting close. You ain't got to say down to that boy. He'll be the cleanest, prettiest smelling person in the house. Why? He's trying to get some little girl to accept him. You know what I mean? 
But we do things to get people to accept us. But then there's times in our life where we can't even accept ourselves. You know, one of the biggest issues in life a lot of times, now look, I love to dress like a bum as much as anybody. I, matter of fact, you catch me at home in about an hour or two, I'll tell you what I'm going to have on. I'm going to have on a pair of like gym shorts, I'm going to be barefoot, and I'm going to have the raggediest t-shirt you've ever seen on. And I'm going to be comfortable, and I don't care. Amen. But, but here's the thing. Some of us have been walking around like that so long, we look in the mirror and we say, Ooh, I look rough. You're right. Amen. Clean up every once in a while. Man, look, it, there's nothing like cleaning up, putting on some nice clothes, getting a haircut. Shave, men, Amen. A bunch of woolly bullies running around these days. Shave and clean up and look nice. It, look, it, there's a lot for your, self, for your self-esteem. But when you constantly are looking like a bum and acting like a bum and dressing like, you, you have got this low self-esteem. Like, I, I look awful. No. You just need to clean up. You need to accept who you are. You know, one thing that I love about me is I come from nobody. I, I come from Hogansville, Georgia, I've told you. My mom and daddy ain't nobody. They, they wasn't well known or anything like that. And, and I'm fine with that. I actually like that. I love it. I love that small town kind of lifestyle. But some people like to have that want to be known and well known and that's okay but deep down you need to know who you truly are is my point you need to accept who you are quit trying to be something you're not quit trying to be fake be you be real let people love you for who you are Don't try to be something you're not and you're constantly trying to please all the people around. Accept who you are. Accept what you are. And then here's the other thing. Accept who you are in God's eyes. Let me tell you something about God. God loves you. God loves you unconditional. God is going to just love you no matter where you've been or what you've done or how long you've been running from Him. Some people might look at you and say, boy, I ain't seen you in church in a while. And God's just saying, praise God, my child is here. You know, a mother, when they have a child, do they get to look at that baby and say, that ain't the one I've had planned and picked out. You ever thought about that, mamas? Huh? Do you ever, they come bring you that newborn baby? That, that baby's ugly. That ain't my baby. Uh-uh. Now, the daddy might be saying that, but... Now, mama's like, oh, it's the prettiest baby that ever lived. Oh, you know, they still uh, trying to get over birthing this baby. They've totally forgot about birthing the baby. And I've told y'all, I, and I love a baby, but when a baby first, that baby ugly. I don't care. I don't care if you're the prettiest people ever had a baby. That baby's, that baby's head's cattywampus, and it just, that baby's ugly. About two or three days later, they're gorgeous. They're precious. But a mama looks at that baby right out the back, and she says, Oh, my ba- and all the pain and the agony and of the birth and it's just gone. She has accepted that baby. She loves that baby. She grasps that baby as hers, and she will kill you over that baby. That's her baby. Well, that's God to us. God has never looked at you and not wanted you. God loves you. This morning, Evie come in our bedroom. I was sitting there. She loves to pick my ties out on Sunday morning. So if I ever come in here with a funny looking tie, it's Evie's fault, okay? But she loves to pick my tie. But she come in there this morning. I don't know what was, uh, but she just hopped up in my arms and just squeezed and just squeezed. And I, I could have stood there forever just holding that baby, just feeling that love in that moment. And I thought to myself, that's what God wants out of us. God just wants us to crawl up in his arms and just to squeeze him and to love him and just to say, I love you, Daddy. I love you, Father. He accepts us just like we are. Praise God. Some people say, i got to get some things right in my life. Newsflash, you'll never get it right. Just show up like you are and I promise you, God will take you. 
He will clean you up. He will love you. And, and He will change your life. Look what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. And I'm going to let, uh, uh, the comp- let, her, let her help us out here instead of me flipping too. Look what he says. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 2. Or verse three, 4. He says, according as He hath chosen us. There it is. He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Keep going. Having predestined us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to Himself. According to the good pleasure of His will. To the praise uh, of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us and accepted. There it is, and accepted in the beloved. Verse seven. He says, "In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace." Before the foundation of the world, God loved you, God chose you, God created you, and God still wants you. There has never been a time in your life. That God did not want you. There has never been a time in your life where God didn't love you. He loves you no matter what. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short the glory of God. Let me tell you something. The minute you accept that, the better off your life will be. Look, I'm no better than anybody in this room. I might be the preacher. I might be standing right here. But I needed Jesus as bad as anybody in this room. For all have sinned and come short the glory of God. When you accept that I may be a good person, but I'm still a sinner, and I need Jesus, He is the only one that can ever wash away my sins, and it's at this point when you can accept you need something bigger than who you are. So the first one this morning is acceptance. You must accept who you are in Jesus Christ as your Lord said. The second one, love. Love unconditional. You know the thing about our God? There is nothing about you in our life that He don't love except for the sin. Plain and simple. He loves your hair color. Some of y'all won't change your hair color. He loves it. He, he loves um, all the features about you. He, he loves everything about you. He loves you. I look at all three of my youngest, I'm like, man, me and Amy made some pretty babies. Amen. But to you, they might be ugly, but that don't matter. They ain't yours. They're mine. And I love them. I am proud of them. I think the world of them. They, they amaze me at how smart they are. They must take after their mama there. Amen. But... But the point is, I love them. I will do things. I will sacrifice because we love our children. But here's the thing. God loves you too. Love ain't something you switch on and switch off. Love is unconditional. Love is is sacrificial. Love makes sacrifices. Love will go the extra mile. Love will do things that you don't normally want to do. But it'll make your ha- your spouse happy, and you're gonna do it. Amen. God does things because He loves us. God does things. Now look, God says, "Build an altar so I can bless you." God says, come down to this altar. I want to bless your life. I can't stand where you are. I've got so much better for your life. And I want you to grow and to get and to be what I've done. You know, I've I've said this many a time and I mean it with all my heart. God has a plan and you have a purpose. And God loves you too much to leave you where you are. The Bible tells us, look right here, Romans 5, 8. Look at Romans 5, 8 with me. One of the greatest verses in the Bible. Look what he says. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Let me tell you something. Even when you were at your nastiest point of life, as far as sin and being down, even when you were at the lowest point of your life, God still loved you and wanted you. But God commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. 
No matter what, even in your lowest point in life, God still loves you and he still wanted you. Look at the next one with me. The next one. What happens at an altar? First, you have to have acceptance of who you are. Second, you have to have love and unconditional love that only God can provide. But number three, you have to have a transfer at an altar. There is transfer and transformation that takes place at the altar. You, you see, you come with a problem. God comes with a solution. You show up with all your baggage and God shows up as the baggage claim. Amen. There has to be a transfer of who you are in your life to transformation of who you want to be in life. Let me tell you something. How many of y'all are making, you ain't got to raise your hand, I'm just making some statements right here. How many of you are making good money? You're living in a good house, you're driving a good car, but yet you still find emptiness in your life a lot of times. Maybe you ain't even at some of them levels. And yet there's emptiness in your life. Why is that? Because you're trying to find happiness in this world. It don't exist. The only thing that can fill that void in your life that will bring ultimate joy and peace and happiness is when you and the Father are just like this. But you know, it's just kind of like that little old rich boy that showed up to Jesus. And he says, Master, what must I do? And Jesus said, well, Jesus knew him. Imagine that. Jesus said, sell everything you've got, give it to the poor, and follow me. And the Bible says that it broke his heart because he had many possessions and he left sad. You see, he was putting all his faith and his trust in things of this world. And not in his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to ask you something. I'm not bragging right here. I want to ask you a question right here. I surrendered to God and I said, Lord, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'll go. And a few, years, a few months later, year, actually well, years later, all of a sudden, Woodland Baptist Church comes a call me. I got the email on my phone. I tell you, I should have known. I didn't even include a phone number in the resume thing. I get an email from Derek Miller and say, Hey, we really liked you. Can uh, you give us a call? You didn't include your phone number. Should have been a hint, hint right there. <laughs> but anyway, what y'all were getting into. But anyway, I call, come down here. And all of a sudden, God showed up and showed out. And I get ready to... Quit everything to come down here. Here's the funny part. I didn't know none of y'all. I, I didn't know this area. I drove through it on the way to Florida, but I didn't know this area. I don't know nothing now. I, I'm as ignorant to this area and y'all as it comes. And I get ready to come down here. And let me tell y'all what happened. I should have brought it this morning. I almost did. We're fishing, down, or I had took what I told him. I said, uh, y'all voted me in on September the 10th. And I told him, I said, all right, I'm going to go home. I'm going to work a week. The following week, we're on vacation, and I'll be down here September 24th was my very first Sunday. Well, I worked that last week, and while I'm in Florida, I'm sitting on the beach. We're fishing, me and my father-in-law, and all four of my fishing poles are right there. Well, I catch a shark. It's like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. I catch a shark. It's dark. We run down the beach. I get the shark. I got the pictures. And we go back. Well, one of my fishing poles that my father-in-law was using, whoosh, out to sea. And here's the thing. That fishing pole probably worth $40 total. I mean, it, it ain't money. But let me tell y'all what's happening at this time in my life. I am scared to death to be your preacher. I am terrified. I, I'm as excited, but I'm scared to death. And the next morning, now, if you ever stood at the beach, and next time you stand at the beach, maybe you'll feel this like a little bit like what I was that morning. I'm standing on, on that beach, and I'm at the foot of that water, and I look, and there's nothing but water. And I look, and there's nothing but water. And I look, and there's nothing but water. Far as you could see, in every direction. 
And I said, Lord, I know this sounds so stupid. And I know, I know it's so silly. I said, but Lord, just like when you were showing Moses you were with him and you told him to throw down his staff and it turned into a snake and he'd pick it back up and it turned back into his staff. I said, can that fishing pole kind of be my staff? Just to let me know you're with me. I said, God, I just need some peace of mind. I am terrified right now. Can you just give me a little peace of mind? And I'm looking out into this water, and I'm like, man, this is impossible. That, that fish, whatever got that fishing pole, could have went any direction. Two nights later, we're out there, and we're fishing. And my father-in-law starts reeling, and he's like, man, I think I got, man, John, I think I got something. All of a sudden, through the waves, here comes my fishing pole. Now, here's the thing. Amy got pictures of me in this moment, but here's the thing. I had done went and bought another fishing pole, y'all. I really thought that thing was gone. But here's the point to the whole story. I'm grinning from ear to ear. And it wasn't because I got my fishing pole. It's because God was with me. And I knew it. He didn't, a fishing pole, y'all. He didn't have to do that. And some people say, well, that was just lucky. I don't believe in luck. I know better. I, I'm blessed. God has showed up and showed it in my life so many times. I know better. I'm not that lucky. God showed me, I'm with you, son. Year went by. I'm still the preacher. I'm like, maybe you are with me. Five years later, look where I'm at. But here, here's the thing. I had to transfer my lifestyle, my job, and I had to step out on faith and I had to trust God and praise God I'm not looking back. Because the best is yet. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Let me tell you something. The only way you will ever get out of your current situation is you better totally give it to God. Don't just give them little pieces. Don't just give them little bits. Don't just give them a, a piece of your life. You better give Him your whole life. The only way you are 100% going to see a difference in your life is you've got to transfer your life 100% to God. And when you do, you will see things and see God work in your life that will absolutely even amaze you. The, the third one was transfer. Number four. Access. You know what you have at the altar? Access. At the throne of God, you have access to God. You have access to His blessings. Let me tell you something else. Some of y'all been praying for a while. Some of y'all been begging God to move and to show up and to show out. Have you figured out yet? God's not on your time. God's on God's time. While you're panicking, God's kicked back, relaxing. God ain't worried. You are. You see, here's the thing. You want some acceleration in your life. You want some change to happen in your life. Let, let me tell you where it's going to happen. At the altar. God's same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Well, look, if it worked for the Old Testament saints, it's going to work for the New Testament saints. But what happens when you are at an altar? You humble yourself before God. You bow down before God. And let me tell you something. I know what some of y'all are thinking. Brother Johnson, I can't come down there. Everybody will be looking at me. Who cares? They got problems too. At least you was brave enough to get up and come down here. Amen. They the ones going to miss out, not you. Amen. Look, don't worry about anybody around you or sitting beside you. They ain't in no better shape than you. you just brave enough to come on down. Amen. If I was offering a thousand dollars, you wouldn't have no problem coming down, would you? But I said, come on down and get you some prayer, get you some blessing from God. Oh, okay, we're getting in front of everybody. Look, you'd do way better with a blessing from God than you would a thousand dollars from me. That thousand dollars will run out. God's blessings never run out. Amen. Don't cheat yourself. Look, you've got to realize. God has given us an awesome, awesome tool. 
an awesome way to, to grow. It's kind of like a garden that you never water or you never fertilize. Yeah, you might get some fruit, but you go putting some fertilizer and some water on there and you're going to be in abundance. Same thing with your life. Don't cheat your life. And let me tell you what happens. If I cheat Jonathan, guess what happens? I don't just cheat Jonathan. I cheat Amy, and I cheat my three kids, and most of all, I cheat this church too. So just to cheat me ain't just cheating me. It's cheating everybody I love. You will get up and you will kill yourself for a man all week long working that job. But yet you won't surrender at the feet of God. Don't even make good sense. Look what he says right here. He said, you have access. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse 18. Ephesians 2, 18. Look what he says. For through him we both have, here we go, access by one spirit unto the Father. Look at this one. Hebrews 10, 19. Uh, talking about when the veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Because now look what we have. He says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. By the blood of Jesus. Look, back in the day, you couldn't enter in the holiest where the presence of God was. You'd fall down dead. The veil in the temple kept you from it. Now, notice the very next verse after the Bible says Jesus gave up the ghost. It says the veil in the temple ripped from top to bottom. Signifying we have access to the throne of God. Praise God. We can walk in there boldly. It'd be kind of like a security guard been standing there for years and years and years. Saying, you can't enter in here. And all of a sudden, you say, you don't know who I am, Bubba. And you just go right on in. You have access. Jesus has given us access to the throne of God. Look, you're not just back. You know, back in the day, you'd have had to confess your sins to me. How would you like that one, huh? I'll be honest, I wouldn't have liked it either. Amen. <laughs> I'm like, you did what? Huh? What? Huh? No, I'm just kidding. I ain't no better. But here's the thing. But praise God, you ain't got to come to me. You come at the feet of God, at the altar, and bow your heart and you bow your head. And Jesus Christ shows up in your life and moves in your life and shows up. You know the other thing about it? Kaylin, and she ain't the only one. I'm just picking on her. But a reason why a lot of people won't get baptized, they're scared to get in front of all y'all. Well, y'all just smile. Smile real big. Smile. See, y'all ain't that bad. Say, say, cheese. Come on, cheese. You mean y'all are? Maybe y'all are that bad. I might, might be wrong. <laughs> Look, they don't bite. They just nibble a little bit. All right, they ain't that bad. But but a lot of people are terrified to get right there in that pool because they got to get up in front of all y'all. You know, it kind of breaks my heart a little. And maybe this is what we need to do. Every time somebody gets baptized, we need to break out in an applause like they just hit the grand slam that won the game. Let me tell you something. There is nothing scary. There is nothing sad about salvation and baptism. That is the greatest decisions you will ever make in your life. That is the most freeing moments you will ever have in your life. It, look, this ain't a library, okay? I know some of y'all are like, we got to be quiet. We're in church. Now, amen works from now and then. Amen. I brought a breakdown in applause and being inside. Well, like they sung a minute ago, this ain't a funeral service. Lazarus is alive. Jesus is alive. We are coming alive in here. He's bringing us back from a dead lifestyle. There is nothing sad about this. This should be like a pep rally for heaven. Amen. Well, we getting ready. We getting excited. And when somebody gets saved, it's, whoa, praise Jesus. We got another brother and sister in Christ. Amen? It's not saved. Oh. Somebody got saved, y'all. Can y'all believe they got saved? Shh. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. But that's what we've done. That's what we, we, we make it so quiet. And it's just like, it's all, I, there ain't no library in here. Y'all hear me? Y'all say, can, can, holler, amen. 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 And praise God. That sounded so good. Amen. 
Look, y'all ain't, we, if y'all don't want to get Pentecostal, that's okay. But we can still, praise God in here, amen. But we can still be excited that heaven is our home. We have hope. We have joy. We have peace because we got a Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's alive, amen. amen. And, and there ain't nothing sad. There ain't nothing scary. It is wonderful. Matter of fact, some of y'all, it ought to be so exciting and wonderful. Some of y'all be like, I want to get baptized again, brother. It was so good. You know, I mean, just, but that's, that's, we, you don't need it, but that's the point. That it is a wonderful feeling. For some reason, all of a sudden it's like, I, I can't get baptized and people might look at me. <laughs> Praise God! You better hope they're looking at you in heaven. Amen. You better hope there's a whole crowd of them in heaven. Amen. Because you don't want to be in the other place. But notice that you have access. You have a chance to accelerate your life. You have an opportunity at the feet and the throne of God at the altar. Number uh, five. Reconciliation and repentance. You know, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want, I want y'all to notice something right here. We covered this on Wednesday night a couple weeks back. Oh, some good verses right in here. 17 was really good too, but look at verse 18 and 19 with me. Look what he says. And all things are of God who hath, here we go, reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And hath given to us the ministry, keep going right here, of reconciliation. Now look at verse 19 with me. He says, to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Here we go. Not imputing their trespasses. In other words, not holding their trespasses against them. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Let me put it to you like this as what reconciliation is. Uh, reconciliation. Come here, Pam. And, and come here. Sis, you know who you are. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Tammy. Who, whoever you are, you know who you are. Come here. Come on this side. <laughs> kind of scary. Kind of very scary. Amen. <laughs> all right. All right. Spread out a little bit. All right, let's pretend for just a moment Pam is God. Okay, hold on. Nah, nah. Let's pretend for just a moment Pam is God. And Tammy is you and me. Tammy is us. All right, we have, see, we have been torn from God. Sin. Is what tears us from God. Now, a matter of fact, it is this wall that has blocked us from God, from the access of God, from the blessings of God, from the love of God. It is blocking us from God. And now let's pretend I'm Jesus. And here's what Jesus did. And he brought us back together. That's reconciliation. He united, y'all sit down. Thank you. He reuni reunited us with our Creator. He reunited us with the one that loves us more than anything, with the one that wants to bless us. With the one that wants to be there for us, that wants to protect us, praise God. That wants to love us when nothing else will. Jesus is the reconciliation that brought us back to God. You see, we separated ourselves from God. Sin has torn us from God. And Jesus brought us back together. And it's at the altar where you bow your heart and you bow your head. And, and see, what you don't see, and I could probably get Tammy to do this too, but here's the point. If Tammy was right here and she had come down and she bowed her heart... To God at the altar, and all of a sudden it was just like Jesus grabbed like this, and He said, Whoop, and He brought brought them right back together. And He's reconnected to the Father, praise God. And there's nothing sweeter, there's nothing better than being connected with the Father. There's nothing like walking out these doors and going to work tomorrow and knowing God's got me. 
knowing that God's got my spouse, knowing that God's got my kids. There's nothing better. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like when you go to buy a car and you're like, Lord, help me pay for this. And he just shows up and shows up. There's nothing like when you buy a house and like, Lord, I, I don't know. I ain't got the money for this. And he just shows up and shows out. There, there's nothing like when you mess up. And God still loves you. There's nothing like running from God for years and years and years. And you know the beauty of God? You can go a million steps in the wrong direction. You know how many it takes to get back into His grace and His love and His mercy? Praise God. Why? Because He is reconciling us. He is putting us back together when nothing else can. And then finally, look at this last one with me right here. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You know the thing about an altar? There must be a sacrifice. An altar isn't nothing without a sacrifice. Remember what we read in just a minute ago. He said you can bring your goats and your lambs and you can offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. As a matter of fact, I even love in some other instances where they were doing a sacrifice. Have you ever rode when you leave out a lot of times and you rode right up here at the corner and the 13th Street barbecue's right there and you're sitting at this red light and all of a sudden, the wind's blowing just right, and you get that, whoo, that barbecue smell. That's heavenly, amen. It really is. The Bible says on the altar and the sacrifice that it was a sweet Savior to the Lord. He loved the smell of a barbecue too, praise God, amen. So, but here's the point. What creates that sweet aroma? The sacrifice. Sacrifice does. You see, an altar isn't any good without a sacrifice. It must cost you something before it means something. A sacrifice has to be given at the altar. You see, God don't want you to just come down here and to pray or to praise or to bow your head Unless you're willing to give a sacrifice. Unless you're willing to change. Unless you're willing to sacrifice some ways in your life that have been hurting you and your spouse, that have been hurting your testimony, that have been hurting your walk. Look, here's the thing about being a child of God. So what if I've got everybody fooled that I'm some perfect saint? If God knows my heart. You think God's going to bless that? Not even close. There has to be a sacrifice at the altar. Listen to what the Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 15 through 16. Look what he says right here. He says, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of what? Praise. To God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Look at the next verse. He says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Now, does anywhere right there, does that say only while you're in church? Only on Sunday morning? No. We are to offer the sacrifice of praise Always, constantly, we are to offer the sacrifice of praise. Look at this next verse. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. He says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us in an what? Offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet, there it is, sweet smelling savior. You know what? God loves when you will sacrifice for Him. When you will change everything so that you can be more pleasing to Him. There is nothing better in this life than when you sacrifice everything to be more pleasing to God. Let me tell you what happens. Let me show you with marriage what happens. If God is at the pinnacle of of your marriage, and you're sacrificing everything to marriage, uh, your marriage, and to God, you and your spouse, then guess what? You're in the bottom corners, 
As you two grow closer to God, look what you're doing. Growing closer together. If you are sacrificing everything. Look, I know it's hard to get here on Wednesday nights. I know it's hard to get up extra early and read your Bible and pray before you walk out of the house. I know. I know it's not easy sometimes when you are so flustered to praise God. But let me tell you something. Praising God is a choice. Like I said last week, you got a choice. You can be ill and ornery and grouchy. Or praise God, you can smile and you can say, you know what? As Paul says, this is temporary for the eternal blessings of God. Praise God. You've got a choice. You need to sacrifice your life to Jesus Christ. And I promise you, you will not ever regret it. You will not ever say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. That that will never come out of your mouth. Mom and Dad... I'm, I'm done, but here's what I want to say as we close. I'm going to give an altar call here in just a few moments. And if you sit there in that seat, and then when you stand up and don't come down here, here's what you're doing. You are saying, I'm in church, but my life is going plenty good enough. I don't need any more blessing if you don't come down here. Look, I'm not doing this for my glory. You're not praying to Jonathan. I'm not doing this because I feel like uh, you've got everything together and you don't need to come down here. I know all of us better than that. I'm telling you because it's my job to show you a better way. It's my job to teach you a better way. And if if I'm a coach... And you're just hitting little um, ground balls. And I say, hey, if you'll do this, you can hit home runs. Then guess what? I'm doing something to help you, to make you better. Well, as your pastor, let me tell you something. You are making contact. You are doing good. But you can do way better. You are cheating yourself. You're not cheating me. You're not cheating Woodland Baptist Church. God is blessing Woodland Baptist Church. I will say this, though. I hope you're praying for Woodland Baptist Church. Amen. I ain't talking about these buildings either. I'm talking about each other. We are the church. These are buildings. I'll be praying for each other. But if you don't come down here, and look, I know every, every week it may not be, but if you don't come down here, let me tell you what. If you don't come and get you some of this altar, let me tell you what you're doing. You're cheating yourself, you're cheating your families. You're cheating your kids. You're cheating your future and the future blessings. Look, we have no problem bragging on God when He blesses us. But how about fall down at His feet and thank Him? How about fall down at His feet and say, Father, I will sacrifice my life. Father, I will live a life I hope one day when I stand before you, you'll say, well done, I am so proud of you. Father, that's the kind of sacrifice I want to make in my life. Look, don't do it for your preacher. Don't do it for your spouse. Do it for God. And I promise you, your preacher will be happy. Your spouse will be happy. Your boss will be happy. Your life will be happy. Offer a sacrifice to God. Do it at what we call an old-fashioned altar. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you, I've seen it my entire life. How about it, Mr. Ed? Mr. Ed said he'd been in church his entire life. What did you used to see at them altars? It used to be full, didn't it? People would surrender their lives and give their lives right here. This ain't just a stage, y'all. This is God's altar. This is a place where God is exalted and where God shows up in your life. This is not a place where you get a blessing from me. This is where you get blessed from God. And look what he tells us one more time. Look right here. At the end of our... Go back to Exodus 20, verse 24. Read it with me one last time in the last part right there. He says, In all places where I record my name, this is his spot, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. If you want blessings in your life, if you want to just say thank you God and you want some change in your life, you come down to an old-fashioned altar and watch what God does in your life.
Listen, I'm not going to be with you this week, but God is. And watch what He does in your life. I promise you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, I want to ask you first, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that if you died right now, you know that you know that you know heaven would be your home? And you say, Brother John, I just don't know. I hope so. Or I think so. Wrong answer. The Bible says you can know so. If you know heaven would be your home, would you lift your hand? Raise it up high. Look, we ain't, this is proud. Amen. Look at him hands. Maybe you couldn't lift your hand right now, though. You say, Brother John, I just don't know. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if we will confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts, you shall be saved. So right where you sit today, will you pray this prayer with me? Believe it in all your heart. You pray right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, I realize I am a sinner. Lord, I'm asking you to please forgive me all my sins. Come into my heart and save my soul. Lord, I'm asking you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Nobody looking around. If you prayed that prayer, would you lift your hand? Anybody, anywhere, I'm looking. Raise them up high. Praise God. I see them hands. I want to ask you something right now. Look, I know you are a blessed people. But it can get better. I know you got some friends and you got some family. Maybe it's your own marriage. Maybe it's your own kids. They need some prayer right now. There needs to be some change. There needs to be some reconciliation. There needs to be some transfer. There, there needs to be some acceptance and some love. And there needs to be some sacrifice this morning. God loves an old-fashioned altar. God loves a sacrifice. God loves a sweet smell of Savior. Are you that smell? Are you what makes God's... Are you what filling His nostrils? Are you bringing Him joy and happiness in your life? If you're not, why don't you come down? Why don't you give your life to Jesus Christ? Why don't you be the sacrifice that is pleasing in His sight? Why don't you be a sacrifice that will change your home for the good? Listen to me. God's blessing and your action make things move. Are people looking at your life and saying, "Uh, I think they've got God. No, they should know that Jesus is in your life. They should know that you are a born again child of God. There is no way God can slip into your life and it be undetected. It's impossible. There's no way Jesus can be the Lord and Savior of your life and He just slips in secretively and the world is undetected into the world. Listen, I'm going to question your salvation if that's the truth. There should be some change in your life. There should be some sacrifice in your life this morning. And it's going to happen at an old-fashioned altar. It's going to happen where God meets man and blesses us at an altar. So this morning, as you all stand, I'm fixing to pray, and then I'm going to open this old-fashioned altar. Won't you come? Don't worry about the person next to you. Matter of fact, grab their hand and pull them down there with you. They need it too. But you come this morning. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat your your marriage. Don't cheat your kids. Don't cheat your church, folks. You come down here and you get some of God. You, You come meet with God this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, we are so thankful, Lord, that, Lord, you still meet with us. Lord, you still come down to this 
altar and Lord you meet with us and you bless us and you help us and you change our lives Lord you let us transfer all that weight all that pain all that sorrow all that regret Lord you let us transfer it to you and Lord you just love us and you bless us and you motivate us and you move us and Lord you change our lives and Lord we just can't thank you enough Lord do it again Lord, get that Holy Spirit behind them and push them down here. Lord, I know they need it. Lord, I need it. Well, I'm going to get down here with them. Lord, I just thank you that you aren't too busy to meet with us. Lord, you aren't too busy to bless us. Lord, you aren't too busy to hear our prayers. Lord, you love us. You love our sacrifice. You love when we try to please you. And Lord, I pray now that you bless this time. Lord, help us, be with us, and bless us like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody standing. This altar is open.